More than 200 different species of sharks and rays call the waters of the Philippines home. Yet only a few species have received the protection they need to recover depleted populations. Many are still fished and overexploited, and most remain unregulated throughout the country. The biggest threat to sharks and rays in the Philippines would be the fishery, with almost 200 species of sharks and rays in the Philippines, and them being present throughout the country in different habitats. If you look at data, there are places that is as an amazing biodiversity, but every night 80,000 hooks are put in the water. So if a shark swim past the first thousand hook, there are still 79,000 waiting for him. In some locations, habitat loss is a big problem as well. A lot of these sharks use mangrove forest uh, to come and breed and reproduce and use as nursery. Uh, we are seeing a big loss of mangrove all around the ground. In addition to overfishing and habitat loss, pollution, ocean acidification, and climate change are contributing to the continued decline of sharks and ray populations in the Philippines. Conservation measures on a national level would help protect the most vulnerable species. We would like to make it clear that when we say protection, it does not automatically ban fishing, trading, consumption, or any utilization of shark species. It should be in the context of science determining whether it's viable to take them out from the water. Just to make sure that their numbers or stocks are at a level where they'll be able to perform or function their ecological role for a healthy marine ecosystem. Recognizing these threats, stakeholders from the academe, NGOs, government, and businesses gathered to develop the 2020 Conservation Roadmap for Sharks and Rays in the Philippines. The plan maps out the opportunities and challenges to conserve sharks and rays in the country. The roadmap takes a comprehensive approach to propel shark and ray conservation forward in the Philippines in the hope of finding the balance between human needs and the integrity of the Philippine marine ecosystem. So the roadmap is um, a blueprint of what we envision shark and ray conservation to be um, in 2020. So it has different aspects on governance, there's policies, there's communications and research, and community-based interventions. Protein from shark and ray has been really important uh, uh, for Filipinos for the last centuries. But uh, we, need, we realize that the fishery is not sustainable, that we need to find a way to transition out and protect these animals. And there are different ways to do it. Tubataha Reef's natural park in Palawan, Philippines, spans 97,030 hectares and is home to 13 species of dolphins and whales, 600 species of fish, 360 species of corals, and 11 species of sharks. It is a national and global treasure. The biggest success, and as we can see for Tubataha, there's the highest density of white tip reef shark and gray reef sharks in the world, is because this place has been protected properly for 20 years. And we have a clear example to Bataha Reef Natural Park, that is where most of the people come to see the big sharks and rays, and places like Malapasco and Don Sol, they bring uh, millions of dollars every year to the economy. Ang Tubata parang tahanan na ng ano eh. Kung baga sa kon sila nang, uh, dito na sila naniran dahil siguro so nakita nila na magandang tira ng Tubata na hindi sila na, na disturb tulad ng ibang lugar na daming mga fishermen o na disturb sila kaya Yun, kaya nandito mga patingin, yun ang kagandaan siguro. Tubataha is one of the very few pristine reefs in the Philippines. Sharks and rays are important in Tubataha because they are top predators and they help to control the population of other species and they help to maintain the balance of this ecosystem. And they're not only ecologically significant to us, they're also significant economically because they bring in tourism revenues. Uh, a lot of tourists come here and they're very, very keen on seeing the sharks and the rays in the park. In recognition to the uniqueness of sharks as a species, there needs to be a separate, a, a distinct law that recognizes the biological limits, the biological functions of sharks. That law looks at uh, incentives, how do we govern trade, how do we govern fishing, and how sharks as a species will be protected in order for the communities to 
maximize benefit from it. So when we talk about shark and ray conservation, it's not just about saving sharks and rays, but also about finding that balance between what humans need in terms of their livelihood and their um, lifestyles. Being able to use sharks at the point where they're able to recover. And right now, we're still in the process, we're in a journey to find out where that happy, balanced place is. When implemented, the 2020 Conservation Roadmap for Sharks and Rays in the Philippines will show that sustainability and cooperation are key to conserve them, and ultimately, our seas and our future. To claim our right to a balanced and healthy ecology, we call on governments, advocates, businesses, and every single Filipino to support this roadmap and allow sharks their rightful existence in the Philippine Seas.